I feel like everything will just fall in line. It really does. Dude. When you're a disciple of Christ. Dude, I've experienced an insane transformation after reading this book and trying to actually dude. do it. Like to be a dis like I've I am truly for the first time in my life learning to be a holistic disciple and apprentice of Christ. And it is yes. changing my life. It's changing my freaking life. It's changing my life, dude. And this makes me not want to I cannot shut up about it. Like I can't. Me neither, dude. It gets me fired up. And that is what we're missing. That's what we've been missing, man. It's like, I've had the spiritual highs. I've had the moments of empowerment, right? Like, those Holy Spirit fire moments. And there's a time and a place for that. But I've been missing the day-to-day -day empowerment. Yes, dude. The day-to-day -day living in the kingdom. Which dude. is the best part. It's the best part. It's the, that's, that's what... It's not just the best part. It's like the essence of our faith. <laughs> That's what Jesus was trying to teach. <sighs> <sighs> wow, I am shivering like hard right now. <sighs> Dude, we can wrap this up, man. I feel like we just got. I feel like we just got dude, to a we good point. Zero to hundred, bro. <laughs> no, we did go zero. Golly, the so, rain just like was coming down. Dude, and that was it was just, like, <laughs> in the moment. Dude, you were you were keeping the fire going just by your words. <laughs> <laughs> so, I so yeah, to just I, I that is what I believe is like the the core issue. I think that is what it narrows down to. It is. That was beautiful. Is to understanding what it really means to live in the kingdom, like Jesus taught it. And once you understand that and become a disciple of Christ and you walk that out and you live that out, then in turn you can disciple others. Yes. And teach them how to live like Christ as you are. Yes. And it just, then it multiplies and it goes and it goes and it goes. And then, you know, then you can have a congregation of people and you can establish elders maybe or deacons and you can structure the way that you have these services anyway, but like, oh my gosh, that's what I was going to say. Okay. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Keep going. Um, oh, dude, Paul talks about in <laughs> Romans. I don't think you're in, sh in the shot right now. I might not be I'm just freezing. Paul talks about in Romans how, oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. This is what all God's leading in my notes, <laughs> but I truly think that the church establishment today, in a way, has become our law. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Does that make Holy sense? Holy crap! Like, yes. I feel like, oh my gosh, okay. There's this, remember I, I said that quote a long time ago to you, where it's this guy that Dallas Willard quotes, and it's like, our church today, the establishment just have, we have all these oughts. It's like, we ought to have a sermon. Mm. We ought to have worship. We ought to just do all these things because it's just what we do. We don't even know why. It's just, it's, it really is almost like a law that yeah, we follow. It is, dude. It's like we're serving the law. Yeah. We're serving the church establishment. We're serving these buildings. That's why the ritual it, is so important for us because it makes us feel good. Yes, It makes dude. us feel like we're fulfilling something for a period, but then it leaves us empty. It leaves us empty, dude. <laughs> and it disempowered. Empty. Yes, it's like, uh, dude, it's literally what Jesus says. It's like, these buildings should be made to serve us, not us serve the buildings. And that's why you people know, like, don't want to come to churches because they don't want to follow another set of rules. Exactly, exactly. They think, that's all that, they think that that's all that religion is. Exactly, dude. 